when planning things, and we kind of uh, bumped into it yesterday, the planning fallacy, that everything seems to take longer than it should. Um, I'm sure those of us in, in trades, as in carpenters or builders or mechanics, all have run headlong into the planning fallacy where we always underestimate the time and the effort involved in getting a job done. In appropriate technology, it's exactly the same. You've got the guy that when he designs, he will always put hoogle beds in, even though they're not appropriate. He's approaching the designers. How do I fit into this design the stuff that I love, rather than looking at it and kind of deciding that, no, the stuff I, I do love is not appropriate. I, I mean, a classic example is, I love rocket stoves, but um, I live in the subtropics. So I'm probably never going to or should never build a, uh, a rocket mass heater. Um, simply because it's just not appropriate for my climate. I would love to do it and have an example to show people and maybe from that point of view I would have one. But certainly, um, you know, I've done something very wrong in building my house if I need, in the subtropics, need a rocket mass heater to, to actually uh, cook with. One of the most important things is talk, one, one is be very clear what you're designing for. The end result, sometimes we get trapped into actually um, building something and we forget what we're trying to do at, at the end. The other one is talk to the end user and I think that's the, the point that Tyler brought up, brought up is that unless you know how the, the particular thing is getting used then very often you fall into the trap of assuming you know how it's going to get used and then you, you build and design appropriately. Of course the big thing with what we're doing is we're building from scrap. So often we're not going to have the perfect part or, or the perfect material. So we're going to make do and actually look, kind of look at the, the materials and go, okay, so how do we get to where we want to be with this material? So often it's about thinking and being creative. That's why I love wandering around um, scrap yards and junk yards and actually looking at the stuff. And, you know, if I see a bathtub, you know, it might be that I'm seeing a, a worm farm or, you know, um, some sort of composting system or a small fish pond or whatever. So it's always about seeing the materials inside. Immediately that you come up with a good idea, I always, rather than try and find information to support the fact that it is a good idea, go looking for information, like play your own devil's advocate and say, well, why is this not a good idea? Because you can go along with an idea and convince yourself that it's great, but all it would take is just a little bit of assuming that you're wrong and looking for the faults in the design and, and it'll quickly highlight any problems there. I'll, I'll look up the negative information, have a read and see, is there anything that's actually true or relevant? Am I fooling myself or not? Be realistic about your abilities. A lot of people you know, tend to overestimate their abilities and generally the less able they are, the more they tend to overestimate their abilities. But at the same time, don't be afraid to have a go at stuff. So many people go, oh, I can't do it. Um, we're going to start um, learning to weld in, in, in a moment. And it's amazing how quickly you can just pick up, pick up the basics. It always takes longer. It always costs more. And you could always have done a better job. That is this constant underestimation of how long it takes and how hard stuff is to do. One of the best tricks is actually... Um, I find is work out how long you think it's going to take and then at least double it. Unless it's a task you've done before, there tends to be always um, always problems with it. And so I'd go back and say, um, you know, it's, it's better to finish a task early and sort of be under the timeline you've given yourself than, than to go over. The other one too is turn the problem on its head, come at it from a different direction. So many times when you're designing something, you'll... Uh, you'll hit a brick wall and uh, it's hard to get past it. So you just turn, turn the idea on its head, try and think of novel approaches to how you want to do it. When we're building stuff like rocket stoves and such out of, uh, out of scrap, often it's not so much about accuracy as getting, um, just getting the, the various components that were never meant to get together together. So the analogy I use is that we can try and be very accurate in terms of getting to a particular point. Say that so we're, we're designing towards a particular point. We're trying to hit a very narrow target. And I liken it to if you're standing on the bank of a river and you're trying to throw a rock and a stone to actually land on that target. 
sometimes getting towards the target is actually quite hard, sort of landing in the area that you want to be. Whereas often the best, the best approach, um, and this is a mental approach, but the, the best approach is to go back to where your target is and design backwards. So, because you've got a much broader target to then hit. Now, I know that sounds strange, but a real life, a real life example was we were, um, we were building a pedal powered washing machine. And so we had all these different gear sets hooked up to a, a push bike. And we had to get one of the drives up to a gear on the back of the washing machine. And so we were trying to work out the brackets that we would have to make to get to this one small area and miss everything, all the supports and whatever that we had around it. And so we, it was starting to be a bit of a problem, people thinking, oh, we're going to have to build this and build this. And in the end, what we did was we went straight to the gear and we actually built the bracketry out from that point because that was the tightest fit and the most critical. And once we got out of that area, then we could sort of do the rest of the design. So it doesn't sound like a big thing, but so often to flip the idea on its head and come from your end use backwards really helps.